welcome to Liminal Light, a show that explores the languages of myth and lore, sky and star, earth and embodiment through astrology, art, and spirit engagement. I'm your host, Chris. Enjoy. skeletons mashed into the storage closet and crammed tight then closed shut subject to maceration and marrow unjoint emulsifiers to massage the moist inner medium out bleaching the bones and rendering the material into mush a thick off gray paste of coagulated mummy mire is obligated ejected out the hatch to the other side and flushed into the time-racked sewer system burst out the sidewall into the streets and exposed itself like an ectoplasmic epidemic episode, smearing the scarred and burned skins of tender July's crab flesh, free of shell, vulnerable and open to the elements like a nest of bald chicks and a hail of gravel, the stony hand of time spanking our wounds maliciously like boulder-clapping clockwork until our nerve endings retreated to outer space and checked themselves out of the hospital. Just rugged terrain left where baby bottom once rolled like soft hill mounds, glades and rent and left pocked with meteorites and filled with shrapnel from previous conflicts, delivered by municipal waste syndicates, overtaken by the mob who turn their blind eyes to care or concern and just get the dirty job done. We escaped the horror by taking to the tunnels, engulfed in septic tubes and slithered and squeezed our bulk through with no thought of a promised land, simply out of survival instincts, until after what seemed like a lifelong stretch, we only a bit deflated and bruised from head to toe, issued out the pipe like a sack of sad skin from a toothpaste nozzle, orifice into glorious light, and then pouring ourselves into a pair of skin-tight jeans and platform go-go boots with fluorescent hair and rhinestone apparel dangling with exotic feathers and bejeweled to our personal liking, we pressed acid tap dispenser installed within the tip of our tongue and birthed like phoenix, permitted ourselves into the arena, where we threw a miracle of mirrors all take center stage and perform our desires to our heart's content. Like grapes in bunch, the blood drops swell as uvulas swing and we sing our own songs, which spark from our chest and call upon a god that appears in our own likeness, and like a genie from a lamp is compelled to grant our wishes deep into the trip. Our egos at the wheel, we rev our vehicles up to maximum overdrive, and in a cascade of flaming chariots arc across the sky in transit, while via satellite it's all broadcast on the jumbotron. We are instantly recognized for our genius and beauty as the most unique and authentic person at the party amongst millions and selected for an opportunity to enact our wildest dreams. And in the form of the celebrity that would play us in a movie, we embark on adventures that transcend Hollywood and lend us a photograph plaque slot in the yearbook annals of Mythological Pantheon's Hall of Fame. From elsewhere entirely, we somehow hear a slight whisper amidst the applause and screams of fans with keen sensory perception, pick up a signal issuing forth from the forest's edge and heeding the beckoning beacon, follow the beeping and discreet instructions of insects to the tree line, where we find colonies of ants hard at work, assembling an impossibly complex three-dimensional puzzle, which directly applies to the things we most recently realized about ourselves while up all night partying and performing. With magnifying glass and microscope and notepad and reference materials, we roll up our sleeves and shrink to minute proportions so we can get involved and lend a hand to the busy machinations of the marching creatures amidst a process of putting it all together. Finding it utterly fascinating, we seek smaller and smaller sizes until with every iota of our interest, we delve into deeper abstraction until we are at the threshold of finite particulars, an issue on manifested as merely one tiny factor in the inner workings of the natural world. 
August feels much different from the dark tunnels and septic pressures and brutal purgations of much of June and July. After our forced march through the bowels and basements of our lives under the sagging framing and threatening collapse and emergency removals, driven on both necessity and a need to return to our intuitive natures, we emerge and ascend up into the blazing light where anything around with reflective ability whatsoever becomes a mirror and we amplify our own radiance and reflection as well as see ourselves everywhere. With the confidence to speak and express ourselves and who we are and what we are up to, our MOs get upgrades and are offered space on the larger stage where we can see the audience below lit up fully and the illuminated landscape of persona expands before our eyes wondrously as invitations to ascend in status abound and opportunities to advance our objectives and achieve our ultimate aims seem excitingly obtainable. This is all initiated with the sun's late July ingress into Leo, followed by the new moon in the lion's eighth degree moments before August is initiated. Abruptly ending eclipse season with the first regular lunation and safe distance from the node's shadows. Things are not only in a much brighter and dignified condition, with Venus, Mars, and then later Mercury co-present with the Sun strong in his own domicile, and all planning to complete trines with Jupiter, the greater benefic, also in rulership and readying to turn direct, but they are so contrasted to the emotional pollution and material sickness and foul hauntings of the earlier summer that more than a bit of mania is likely as spice flickering in the mix of excitement and inspiration. Like captives let loose or children released into a playground, we rush from our pens and prisons, sugar high and amphetamine laced, and begin to fire all the pistons at once with no care for material maintenance or care for resource monitoring, speeding along on pure enthusiasm, probably forgetting to eat if we weren't so busy feasting and taking it all in. Centrality, visibility, confidence, presence, and showcasing who we truly are and making our spirit's volition loud and clear is likely to conjure to most attention from benefactors and patrons who come forward with exciting proposals to embark on adventures along exactly the lines you were looking for. It's so crazy because it's true. Can't believe our eyes kind of action with sequin sparks and acid tracers incendiary off the edges of spotlight perimeter as we do our in-zone victory dance with glass raised to our honor to the tune of our own theme song blasting from our boombox. Interestingly, this seems to kick right off after the new moon when Venus squares Uranus on August 2nd. The sign ruler of Taurus checking in on her house and getting an energetic jolt that sets a radical tone and demanding we get a revolutionary makeover to appear in public more like ourselves. In a way, this is us showing up as our avatars, as the idealized cartoon demigod daemon persona powered mythological version of who we really are. It's not untrue, it's just us with volume all the way up, in full saturation, unfiltered as a pure ego driven flaming creature. Our dreams and visions and desires and God-sent destinies respond to the colorful flagging, signaling, wind flapping and ritual mating dance moves. Just keep in mind that everyone will be doing this simultaneously, so make sure to hydrate thoroughly for the three-week rave. The full moon in Aquarius catches us about a third of the way through the loud and proud and highest kites revelatory escapades of self-fulfilling prophecies of fate and fortune and it's part of an interesting day which likely signals a kind of transition from the party to the after party, before the culmination of a fresh and potent cycle of manifestation, which concludes with us getting as far out as we can, going beyond normal limits, concocting many hypotheses, being experimental and cutting edge and avant-garde and beyond status quo, where we feel a need for like-minded people or no one else at all. Venus overtakes the sun and conjoins the diurnal luminary in the early hours of 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time where she is purified and cleaned of all the dross and dead skin clinging to her and is refreshed and revitalized and then reborn. Our very personal values and identity and outlook on what we love and lust after and how we see beauty and what we seek to bond with perfectly aligns with our objectives and intelligence and vision. And in a moment of pure self-centered realization, 
we set out after pleasures that are more in tune with our own truths and spiritual codes and image of ideal self. An hour later, Mercury exits his retrograde shadow and the process of re-editing who we are and what we really need concludes as we step forward into fresh thinking. The following morning, Mercury squares Uranus, the very aspect he seemed to turn and flee from just before his retrograde station, now ready to receive the electricity and conduct risky experiments in hot-rodding his public speaking style. After the Aquarius moon, things seem to steadily shift. Mars, who is double dignified by face in the third decan of Leo, leaves and crosses over into Virgo, as electric live wires start to seek grounding and the critical search for fuel to keep the fires burning begins. This is a sense that we need to tweak some details if we are going to keep the fight for being ourselves alive. For hearts to remain throbbing to the beat of our own drums, we might need to find more information to feel excited about and seek out concrete processes to put ourselves through to actualize our inspired objectives. Getting roused up and ecstatic about our new reclamation of ourselves in the context of our holy quests can only be celebrated for so long before we must get down to business and begin the initiation and engage with the work. There's a week of overlap where we're all scrounging for kindling and whatever will burn to keep the lamps lit before we switch over to academic wildcrafting in earnest. With our big solo onstage complete, we dance offstage and immediately start pulling ropes and working lights and mics, going behind the scenes to assist with whatever needs to happen to keep the production going. Interesting that since Regulus has moved into Virgo around 2011 or 12, we have seen the tech millionaire class really emerge and solidify, and many of the most eminent people in the world are names unknown rather than being documented on lifestyles of the rich and famous. It's worth noting when planets pass over this point of the zodiac, the first degree of Virgo, as there are opportunities to catch elections which can bring considerable amount of attention to a variety of actions. This might also suggest that the party's over. Signals are pretty visible and demand that we begin to look closer at more pertinent details afoot rather than lose ourselves in the mirror attending to our makeup and adjusting our image. Venus enters next, where she finds her traditional fall, and we might here seek the depths of initiation and darkness of caves and put ourselves in our attractions through a thorough creative process and attempt an alchemy of desire. This oversensitivity to detail and intense sorting and filtering of beauty seems fitting after having such vivid self-realizations. It's in fact quite urgent and even agitated as Venus comes to meet and can join with Mars shortly after their ingress. Receptivity and action blending, penetrating and yearning, taking physical space together, and arrive at a kind of rotational dynamic and sexual tension that can be put into many purposes, creativity being an obvious one, and in this case, the fixate, fixated nature of Virgo implies locating exacting kinks and playing out convoluted erotic operations might be a good alternative to worrying over aesthetics and aesthetic decisions in detail, like how many centimeters a picture should be moved over on the wall. Venus and Mars both trying Uranus in tandem following their conjunction, so feeling itchy to get radical and experimental around this time seems to jive. Whether it's in the laboratory or in the bedroom, or depending on your kink, vice versa, there's a kind of being horny to get in there and get working and get your hands dirty and love the actions of the work that you do. Getting off on being in the physical activity of whatever is your focus and via Uranus, getting a little wild with it and bringing in new and unpredictable elements. The sun moves into Virgo on the 22nd and late in the month, Mercury enters rulership in Virgo on the 29th bringing with him dignity and aid to Venus, the Sun, and Mars, who have already arrived. We'll have all the precision and patience and access to information we need to do the procedures or research we have to do at our disposal so we can count on being efficient and effective. Mercury being pretty combust by this point means our out in public eye letting it all hang out and getting funky vibes from a few weeks prior has certainly come to a close as we are descending into the lab and hitting the books with gusto here. Things that require hermetic attention and likely isolation and activity planning 
playing out beneath the surface, unshared or unnoticed. The new moon then takes place in Virgo, tightly configured to Mars, and seeds are sown directly into the urgency to attend to the critical details of the process. We're deep down in the stuff, and with Mercury, Venus, Mars, the Sun, Saturn, Uranus, and Pluto all in Earth signs, we are heavily and securely on the material plane by September. So prepare for stuff, things, details, time, and physical manipulations to matter most. As there is so much Mercury rulership in the house at this point, this may come via abstractions and representations, and alphabets and integers, words and numbers playing primary roles. It would appear that these investigations and alchemical operations bring some real epiphanies as the Sun conjoins Mars and is then caught up by Mercury by the first few days of September, all trining Uranus first, continuing the theme of finding fresh dimensions. Okay, hello and welcome back, Bonnie. Hi, Chris. Hey, how you doing? I feel like I say exactly the same thing every time and that I maybe could just start sampling last time I said it. Yeah. Yeah. Make it easier, <laughs> Make it be easier. more efficient. Yeah, a little yeah. more efficient. Now that we're in Leo season. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? Good. It's um, August 1st today. Yeah, it feels good. Um, which we actually recorded this previously and we're maybe we're doing a whole second run. Because yesterday it wasn't so good. Why was that? I wasn't. In the mood. (laughs) I don't know what it was. It just like wasn't flowing. Yeah. I was ill. Well, I think I wanted to look at the exact degree, but I was thinking that, can I mention chart details? Sure. Sure. (laughs) I was, we, you have Mars getting pretty close to your natal Saturn. So, Mm. um, yeah, was, there was just maybe some too much malefic going on, even Mm. though it was kind of a bright day. They explain the like the inexplicable otherwise rage that rage. comes up <laughs> that has been coming up inside <laughs> inexplicable rage that's i'll have to write that one down as like the, the uh yeah you can feel during this transit you know <laughs> inexplicable rage <laughs> um despite the beautiful weather right yeah which it is crazy beautiful here today and you can definitely it's funny with um you know, Jupiter has been in Sagittarius for several months now, and you know now we have the Sun in Leo in his domicile, and we have um, Mars is also in Leo, and and Venus is in Leo, uh, receiving the resources of of the the planet, um, the dignified planet ruling his sign, uh, and you can really feel it. It's interesting that over the years coming to really know and feel what it what it's like when planets are in dignity Mm -hmm. you know that you're you're kind of like oh yeah i can definitely i can definitely tell yeah um yeah it feels feels good right now yeah 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 (laughs) um and it is a really nice month you know there's some bumps along the way but nothing comparable whatsoever to the last two months that we just went through um but and it's a really interesting step change and dynamic shift after we had all the Capricorn cancer eclipses and, and planets transiting, um, cancer and opposing Saturn and Pluto in, um, in Capricorn the month before. Um, so June and July were just really, really filled with tons of earth and tons of water Mm -hmm. and, um, with the malefics present and the nodes, um, getting triggered. So just lots of, lots of emotion and like kind of emotional um excess emotion and Mm. and kind of like physical i I mean quite literally just like physical shit just mared you know like to deal with you know so there's lots of mared stories going around (laughs) totally (laughs) yeah which is funny you'll get that literally but just in general just being like oh i just gotta get this shit out of here i just gotta deal with this Mm -hmm. this fucking shit you know like that kind of feeling and attitude um and and circumstance just kind of being in the middle of that and then lots of emotions around it but also polarized with it kind of 
a whole separate topic. You know, you're like on one end of the seesaw and it just sucks. And you look over to the other end of the seesaw and it's a completely different part of life. But, um, but there's, it's just so overladen with, with emotion and emotional confusion. Cause we also had uh, mercury retrograde and cancer at the same time. So mm-hmm. it was a lot of like, it was like a lot of soggy, mucky, um, hard, like difficult, obstructed, um, obligatory, um, sad and, and, uh, kind of hard luck kind of situations. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. But, um, but a lot of necessary stuff got, got un, unclogged or unplugged. Addressed. Yeah, yeah. Addressed for some, some Drudgery. people just experienced it as being awful and other people experience it as just having to, to work through a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I kind of knew it was coming up. And so I got like a 2000 pound printing press out of my, a part of our house you know, that had been there for almost a decade, you know, where you're like, you're like, all right, around the eclipse, I'm going to schedule to unclog this giant object out of the house. Um, and I have Capricorn in the fourth house. So it's like literally the home. I was mm-hmm. like, all right, I'm going to target that because, um, I want to choose how it manifests in my life, at least partially, you know, and that was great to get that out of there. Um, but I did end up pulling my back out. <laughs> yes. Uh, moving your motorcycle. Yeah. Before, <laughs> right before yeah. moving, right before like the actual moving like, of the printing the press, crazy part. Yeah. yeah. So moving, it's, yeah. So it, yeah, it still was more difficult than expected, but you know, it worked and, and now there's a giant, weight lifted off of your yeah literally the house and yeah. you're you're out of your studio and we'll we'll come back to that because there are some personal examples for as we move into um into the virgo part of of august that that's going to relate to but let's just move into the transits themselves well we have to mention that on the 31st yesterday we had the new moon in Leo and Mercury stationing direct, um, which ends eclipse season officially um, and also kind of opens up uh, Leo uh, lunations and the whole territory of Leo to be fresh for for activity and for lunations like after two years of the eclipses occur or you know or 18 and a half months of the eclipses occurring in in Leo and Aquarius in the last cycle. So Mm -hmm. last summer, um, and then there was one eclipse in this past winter, and then the the summer and winter before that, um, Leo being like a highlighted territory of of being overly extreme. And, you know, that's when we got, you know, you know, it became a really big issue having a kind of, you know, very Rahu Leo um, presidential figure, you know, Mm -hmm. like a very like, screaming head version of a president, you Mm -hmm. know, and America tends to really favor, uh, Leo presidents. And then we get this kind of Rahu version of Leo, you know, yeah, um, kind of, and then on the opposite end with the eclipses in Aquarius, that like polarity between like central centralization and decentralization, Mm -hmm. which are definitely topics, uh, throughout, you know, people being like, I want to rally around this. And that makes me sick. I'm out of here, you know? Mm. Um, and then a lot of identity stuff with, with Leo, like, um, uh, like taking major strides in, into like a social media avatar identities, you know, that kind of, we were left with at the tail end of, of, uh, what Uranus did in Aries over the, the past seven years. Mm-hmm. And then Uranus's transition into Taurus, um, you know, setting a new stage for what is going to get, uh, radicalized, but also kind of working into that Leo eclipse season, just kind of really playing off, off a overly extreme identity expression, you know? Yes. And so now we get normal Leo, but it's also Leo that's getting augmented by, um, being trying and harmonized to Jupiter in Sagittarius saying like, not just like, Oh yeah, doesn't it feel really good to just be yourself and, and tell people who you are and have the confidence to just kind of be, um, who you, who you truly want to radiate and, and, you know, have your own kind of 
spiritual code, your own like sh- chivalric code mm-hmm. that, that feels really great and vitalizing and, um, and clear. Um, but Jupiter's like, yeah, sure. And turn up the volume on it, bring it on. Like that's going to like, let's really go there and, and take that, take that out on the road in a big way. Um, then also Uranus and Taurus squaring the planets in Leo kind of, um, I've been likening it to kind of the cattle prod, you know, cause it's the sign of the bull, yeah. you know, and Uranus is like kind of lightning bolt kind of activity being like, um, you know, we're already getting this encouragement and this feeling more natural about being ourselves this round. And we're, uh, like invitation to go big with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then also this kind of like jarring kind of like, well, you better move it, you know, like you better get in there and and do it, you know? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. It seems like there's sort of this prodding to just really come out as you, as you feel, which we already talked about last month, but like to kind of just present yourself as you want and just really kind of you know, bravado and horns, feathers, whatever. Horns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and the devil. In the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then in the middle of the month, you know, there's that there's, I think it was around the 15th. There's something that happens. August we talked 15th. about it. Yeah. We talked about it. Um, oh, the Venus superior yeah. conjunction. Yeah. And yeah. so then within there, like you find more inspiration and you're able to um, take this bravado, then the inspiration and then use it to your advantage towards the end of the month. Is that, does oh, that as, seem like as we were talking about like moving towards Virgo? Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's like the first, the month is... I think, Utilize it, as opposed to, you know, because you're talking about three, the three-week rave. Oh, right, of the first half. Of the first half, yeah. yeah, so like... Yeah, the first half is where we get, like, everything in Leo, um, or when I say everything, I mean, um, we get Venus, Mars, the sun in Leo, and we get a new moon in Leo, you know, at the very beginning of the month. And then eventually Mercury catches up and joins them in Leo. So mm-hmm. we have all those planets in a, in Leo um, co-present with the ruler of the domicile, all um, trining Jupiter by sign and all going to make aspect, except for Mars who already did, but all the other planets are going to trine um, Jupiter. And then they're all by the three quarters of the way through the month going to start stepping into Virgo. And, um, and by the time, you know, it's September 1st, everything, that whole crew is in Virgo. And then also Uranus is in Taurus and mm-hmm. Saturn is in um, Capricorn and Pluto is in Capricorn and, and the South Node is in Capricorn. Um, we get almost everything in the sky except for Jupiter and, and Neptune in Earth signs. Uh-huh. So we go right. this like really fiery first half and then really material earthy second half. Um, so yeah, it's like, it's like the comet, like, burrowing into the ground <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> yeah and turning into and turning into like a, a million village. fractured parts yeah a little <laughs> an intricate persepe you know uh, uh but yeah the uh yeah it's like get your mojo on in mm-hmm. the first half and get really excited and get really linked in to um opportunities and and right like you know because that's when being yourself and and showing your cards and being like, well, this is who I am. Um, and I'm really, really excited about this. This is what I ultimately want to go mm-hmm. after. And that people are going to be perhaps like, um, impressed by your enthusiasm and, you know, they'll be, they'll notice you by your, by your peacocking, you know, mm-hmm. you're making yourself visible and then, then kind of um, expressing how enthusiastic and how motivated you are yeah. is going to get the attention of people and things and circumstances that can deliver um, opportunity to you or can like fuel, like feed your fire even more. You yeah. Know? So it might not, it's not necessarily going to come in as like money and goods. Like it won't be like the opportunities of like, Oh, well that's great. Here's a bunch of money to do that thing you want to do. But um, it's it's like, gonna be a grant, but it could be like a connection. Yeah. And like shared enthusiasm. Yeah. You know, like how you're like, which like translates into inspiration sometimes or a can. Yeah. Or like, even like, like, you know, say you're wanting to do something 
and you feel like, I don't know, maybe it'll work. I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. And then you realize that, that the world is actually just begging for you to do that. Yeah. Um, it helps banish a lot of the doubt Yeah. and, and be like, Oh, well, it seems like everything is totally primed for me to do this. Like it'll, like it's fire signs. Like it'll, it'll catch fire. Like it'll ignite if I do it, you know? Um, it's like, it's a go project, Mm -hmm. you know, like, um, like if you were going to like start a band, you know, yeah. uh, and you were like, I don't know, I don't know if people are going to be into this music or whatever. And then you find out that it's exactly what people's appetites are wet for. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, great. This is going to, this is going to go off a lot. Like people are going to love it. They're going to dance. There's going to be a lot of applause, you know, um, that's an opportunity. Um, but it's not necessarily like, oh yeah, like Somebody wants we're gonna, to sign it. Yeah, we're going to give you an advance on that project. Yeah. Like, here's the money, do it. It's just like the being bolstered by more enthusiasm and excitement and creative energy and kind of spiritual gusto, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so anything that comes in, in that immaterial form, you want to like try to tether it somehow, like uh, – throw, throw a lasso on it, you know, uh, get that person's phone number, start an email thread, you know, somehow solidify it into, into something that can be sourced later. Follow up on it. Right. Yeah. Don't just like, just write it on a random piece of paper and throw it in your purse. Yeah. Or feel excited about it in the moment and then be like, yeah, that never really panned out yeah. or whatever, you know? Um, and then also, and then the what you're saying mid month we get the new the full moon in Aquarius, right when we have the Venus Kazemi, and then the same day Mercury exits his shadow of retrograde, and so that's a real dividing line, mm-hmm. and it's after that that, um, you know, if a couple of days after that that we everything starts ingressing into Virgo, yeah, and um, well Mars, Mars in. Yeah, right after Mercury exits his shadow, he squares Uranus, and then the next day, uh, Mars goes into Virgo, and then a couple days later, the Sun goes into Virgo, and then Venus goes into Virgo, and Mercury goes under the beams. And so we get this kind of few days of of like a step change from the first half, that's everything's fire, where we were saying it's like uh, the three-week rave, yeah. you know? And then in the the forecast section earlier, I was talking about how this is the point where you transition from the party to the after party. Yep. And then the party goes on for a few more days, but people are starting to duck out. Um, you're like, what happened to so-and-so? Oh, they left, you know, or Mm -hmm. they, they went to sleep or, um, Oh, we're out of beer. You know, we're out of food. Mm -hmm. We're running out of food. Uh, you know, that fire went out and think, you know, and you're like, Oh, well, I'll run and get to keep it going. You're like, well, I'll run and get more beer. Um, so-and-so is going to gather up some kindling for, to light the fire again. You know, things are starting to, to need material, um, material hands on deck, you know, details need to be attended to. Yeah. So it's kind of like getting really fired up and pumped and like, uh, mojo swollen in the first three weeks. And then taking all that enthusiasm and directing it into what you want to focus on mm-hmm. for the second half. And then nose to the grindstone, nose in, you know, nose buried in the textbook. And then for the second half of, of, um, of August or the second, you know, the, the end part, the like last quarter or whatever. And then try to channel all that energy that you've, you've generated and save, saved up, hopefully, rather than just wasted Cause it's so easy to just like burn the candles at both ends when everything's in fire signs mm-hmm. and be left with nothing after you're like, oh, well that was really bright, but it was brief. You yeah. Know? Um, so you want to try to sustain some of that fire so it can be the jet engine for your, um, intensely detailed, uh, kind of more physical oriented project, which once mercury comes into Virgo, it's really going to assist with, um, towards the what date is that mercury ingress virgo on the 29th so all the way at the end of the month yeah everything's moved into virgo at that point and now mercury shows up with you know he's like here's my wi-fi password here's my you know yes 
yeah all, all the reference materials like here's a bunch of reference books here's like um, access to this like private Facebook group that shares all this um, PhD material and then you suddenly have all these resources mm -hmm. for whatever you're focusing on and direction and things can get way more efficient and then we get a new moon in Virgo at, on the 30th but, right. um, so in that interim but before Mercury shows up um, you're going to want to have that propulsion from the first half of the month to like be filling your sails to move you through the, the next part. Catch you to the 29th. Yeah. Um, but let's, that's a good overview, but maybe let's jump back and talk about the aspects. Um, so what's the first thing we get? Venus square Uranus. On the, on the Friday, the second. And then, yeah, this, we already had um, the sun square Uranus on the, I think the 29th of July. And so we kind of enter August with these Uranus squares with that cattle prod, um, which I think is just talking to people and seeing how it's landing. I've seen, you know, like Uranus and Taurus tends to cause art revolutions, you know, mm -hmm. being like a sign of craft and of um, it's Venus ruled. One of the things it does is <clears throat> like kind of radicalize um, art and, and cause art movements. And I've kind of been waiting for that since uh, Uranus first went into Taurus in May of 2018. Cause you're like, Oh great art revolution, bring it on. You yeah, know? Yeah. Uh, and I haven't really noticed that yet. Maybe looking back, you'll be like, Oh yeah, the seeds were sown mm -hmm. then. But, um, but this is where Uranus squares the ruler I mean, Uranus in, in Taurus squares the ruler of Taurus. So this kind of is the moment where the ruler gets to look back and and in a hard aspect, in a jarring aspect, like fire the starter pistol in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and so, because squares are real motivational, um, like they wake you up. Yes. But, um, so I've noticed people being like really irritated that... Um, the subculture and the counterculture has been lacking. Yeah. You know, cause over the years with, um, especially gentrification, you know, we just don't have the spaces anymore, you know, of post industrial collapse where there's tons of cheap, empty, available warehouse spaces to host an underground culture, you know? Yeah. Now there's just so many more people and places are just being changed. Yeah, it's so you can't much, get that. It's so much more expensive. Yeah, and people are kind of with Saturn and Capricorn the past two years being like, "Oh, you know, I've been really getting my thing together. I've been getting my shit together, stabilizing my life." You know, people have been like starting businesses, buying houses, going to school, and like quitting drinking. The party vibe has been really squashed. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. Uh, and now with the, the Cancer Capricorn eclipses with the South Node in Capricorn, it's kind of like, all right, we maybe like tighten things up too much. And then with the Cancer eclipses, uh, we need some juice. We need some resources. We need to just like feel good, you know? Yeah. And then balance. now with this Uranus square Venus it's starting to be like, okay, well, yeah, let's let's get it going. Like, you know, wh what happened? Where is everyone? You know, where's the art? Where's the, where's the, like the radical art, you know, um, where's the radical craft and, and starting to get itchy and anxious, which are all Uranus, um, signifiers. Um, and also like, you know, the previous eclipse cycle, the South node was in Aquarius and Aquarius by nature is like counterculture is a perfect Aquarius word, you know, mm -hmm. which the, the, the previous kind of two ish year period really cleaned out the counterculture, you know, yes. it was kind of wiped it out, yeah. you know, and then now it's free to fill back in and right or long, right at the same time we get this kind of radicalization of, of craft. So I think it's a lot of people kind of responding to that but also responding to technology because Uranus tends to be very technological kind of being like, and now that it's in an earth sign, um, you know, a lot of like the digital, the digital age and the information age, you're like, okay, this isn't going away. It's our reality earth sign. You know, this is the new technological reality. 
this is where art is at in that moment. Um, what are we going to do? Yeah. You know, and then since it's into Leo, like Venus is squaring from Leo and there's all this Leo stuff going on. It's like, what are we going to do about art and the new technological reality? Um, now that the counterculture has been sort of wiped out and, um, like, who are we, you know, who are we in our art, you know, and how, how do we, how do we reclaim or once more like be ourselves and how do we express ourselves creatively in this situation, this kind of urgent situation? And there's like new expressions because of what you're saying, all the changes everybody's been doing, you're not going to really be, you know, that's even perhaps like where the radicalization can come through where people aren't the same. People did, you know, did get more serious. Um, and I mean, I'm just talking about our friends, but yeah. you know, there's, that's like where the changes can be seen immediately for us, I think. Yeah. And I think that's, that's an important point too, is like, I can't help but um, incorporate personal examples right now. And I think that's part of the the influence of of all the the Leo heavy, yeah. You know, it's like that makes you, me think of me. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, you, you, but you just have to see it from your own perspective, but sort it, of. Yeah, and it, it, they're just easy illustrators. Yeah. Um. But sometimes we tend to be like pointing out lots of stuff in in like current events yeah. or whatever. But right now, it's definitely like it's so hard to not see it. Um, outside of your own context. And it all feels really personal. A lot of this time just feels so personal and just a lot of transformation. And so it would make sense because you're being, you're looking at yourself um, to have those things more handy, like for reference. Yeah, it just feels like everything is a mirror kind Mm -hmm. of. Um, And then, yeah, right after all that, all the cancer eclipse stuff and everything going through cancer. It's, it's so personal. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, there's a definite, like now it's personal kind of, kind of vibe, you know? Um, but yeah, so anyway, that going on and that's interesting to see start up and rev up. Um, and then we get, um, that's Friday, um, August 2nd, we get the Venus square and, and it's really funny when I was writing the forecast, I was, more personal examples but I was saying oh you know this is where like the rave you know kicks off and then here we go you know yeah um and then uh, and then you're you know you're gonna show up and decorating yourself you know to the hilt to like really peacock yourself out and just not to be not yourself but to really be yourself Mm -hmm. you know and then there just happens to be a music festival going on near where we live. And it's like, Oh yeah, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to wear. I'm going to show up on the motorcycle. It's going to be rad. You know, yeah. <laughs> like I'm going to have a blast. Um, yeah. And then yeah. that's just kind of, um, is I already, you know, I wrote the forecast like almost a month ago, you know, and then yeah. it, it all just kind of fell into place that way. Uh, and I just kept noticing that with reading back through the forecast when I recorded it, um, you know, saying things like, oh, and you know, everything's in fire signs. So you're going to forget to feed yourself and forget to fuel the fire. So be careful not to burn out. And then, um, yesterday I'd, or the day before, or whatever it was, I just totally forgot to have coffee, totally forgot to eat all day long, yeah. you know? And, um, and then we had only been, the only food we were eating was really late at night when we were like, okay, now we really have to eat, you know? Um, we were grilling. Yeah. And it was like, you know, getting a fire going and like roasting, yeah. you know? So it was just funny to see, to see it just, um, the influences just kind of presenting themselves before your eyes. You yeah. Know? Cause it's always funny, like writing this stuff, um, you know, predictively like beforehand and then running into it and being like, Oh my God, like I'll forget and read my forecast Mm -hmm. that for the day and be like, Oh yeah. You know, um, sometimes, you know, like hopefully, (laughs) hopefully it's correct. (laughs) Or you're like, yes, but in a way I didn't expect or something. Yeah. So Mars enters Leo, the, I mean the third decon of Leo on the same day, which is worth noting because just because Mars is pretty dignified in that, um, spot, especially being co-present the sun, but not combust because Mars has dignity by face 
in the third deck on in both systems of attribution of, mm-hmm. of dignity there. So Mars is like, it's assuredly strong there in a particular way. It kind of has a specific power and it's like a power to sort of stand up for yourself and your beliefs and, and kind of, um, have the courage to kind of protect truth and, and protect, uh, protect sort of, you know, you know, self-expression or, yeah. or, um, so it's a, it, it loves, it loves the struggle for, you know, it love, you know what it, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it loves, it loves standing up for people who struggle to, to stand up for what's right, mm-hmm. you know? Um, totally. So that's, it's interesting and, and a good thing to catch if you want to kind of contain that energy. There's some maybe some talismans in the month that you can make uh, from that aspect, which you'll know about if you join Chrissy's Patreon. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to send out a bunch of magical elections to my Patreon people um, today, and so they can catch a bunch of this good Jupiter Sun um, trine Get dignity. It while you can. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because. In December, Jupiter goes into Capricorn, where uh, it's Ju- um, Jupiter's fall, and Jupiter has a hard time there. In that, um, it's kind of like pragmatic optimism. It's kind of a like, well, at least, at least we're at the bottom of the barrel, and nothing can get worse yeah, from here. Yeah, can't get any know? worse than this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so it kind of is climbing up from the lowest point. So those people can be people have that natally can be really valuable in that moment where everyone else just feels despair and they're like they they see upward but from the bottom you yeah know? but they also it's harder for it's harder for Jupiter in that condition to just really be uh, intensely motivated yeah you know it's kind of like all right let's get a little let's tone it down and take it e- take it easy take just a a little bit of a ter- of territory at a time, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, so you, you want to get this Jupiter as it's turning direct, you know, trying the sun, um, and getting, you know, having uh, tons of, of dignity by rulership in Sagittarius in this, uh, in this later part of 2019. Yeah. Um, so a bunch of elections are going to get delivered, um, about that. So then we get, Sun trine Jupiter on Wednesday, August 7th. Um, and this is, this is that kind of like what we're talking about, about that centrality and honesty and harmony, um, tr- you know, with inspired uh, amalgamation, like, uh, you know, Sagittarius likes to take all the parts and see how they can all be put together. Uh, you know, be like, oh, well, that's, that's great. Like the, all these disparate parts, you know, you're like, Oh, well, that's great. He has a van because we're going to need to lo- lo- bring a bunch of stuff there, you know, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, well, blah, blah, blah. Like every piece, you can see how you can make that like centaur with it. Um, you're yeah. like, oh, well, that's great that he has an arrow and he's a half horse because here we go. You know, yeah, we have a horse. We have a man. We have a bow and arrow. Let's put them all together so that we can we can reach our goal. You yep. Know? Um, that's why Jupiter like Sagittarius is really good, like motivational speaker, uh, kind of sign, but also kind of, um, like really good salesman, you know, mm-hmm. or, or, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It can be a little manipulative, you know, like not in a Scorpio way, but in a kind of like convincing everyone to, to get on board, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is that, this is the period of the sun trying Jupiter where you're like, this is who I am. This is who I really am. Um, I'm going to show you and I'm not afraid to show you. And this is what I am. This is what I'm ultimately about. This is where I, this is where my philosophy and my spirituality, like kind of orientation sits. And this is ultimately what I want to get out of life and what I'm driving towards. Yeah. I mean, that's a wonderful place to be at. Yeah. And it can be even, it can get, it might get a bit manic that everyone is going to be on this channel yeah, yeah. at the same time, yeah. you know, but it's just about sort of gravitating towards what excites you, you know? Yeah. I mean, we have to just be encouraged, encouraging to our, the people around us, you know, and just like 
let them do their thing. Yeah. And everything will seem like it just relates to you because there's so much Leo. Yeah. And you're like, that's so exciting because this about me that, you know, yeah. like, uh, but it ultimately will work out and, pro- and feel good. We just kind of have to know how to keep it sustained and where to channel it and how to, how to hold on to it. And yeah. so then the, um, Venus trying Jupiter is on the eighth the next day. So this is Venus is getting really combusted and really close to the sun. So a lot of our, our aesthetic narratives and what we find attractive and beautiful and desire and where we, um, where we derive pleasure is getting so personal, so, so personalized that there, some of it is, is really just sizzling under the surface, being a little bit like inward turned Mm -hmm. as we move, you know, it's like, it's really hitting some, it's really hitting some chimes within, you know, that are, that are bigger, you know, it's like where you might feel so inspired by what you're seeing and doing and what's happening that it's causing like kind of like creative or desire drives that are igniting below the surface that you're like, Oh, like later I'm totally going to paint that or, or like, Oh, I would really like to also like, you'd be like, Oh, you went to what, wherever, like you went to Indonesia and and it's amazing. Like I really want to go there someday, you know, like, like it's going to, you see, it's, you see what I mean? Versus like, it's happening on the surface. Yeah. You're like, it's not as it's much like, like planting oh, like that's a delicious seeds fruit. Of desire. I'm also going to bite it right now. It's like, yeah. Seeds of desire that yeah. will like come to fruition later, ideally. Yeah. Or doing something internally, you know? Um, and then the moon conjoins Jupiter on the ninth. And so now we're getting, that's like just an auspicious moment on the universal time. It's a, it's 7 p.m. Moon conjunct Jupiter. You might as well just like, I'm going to send out other elections to Patreons, but that's just like a simple time that you can track. Like Friday, August 9th, 7 p.m. Adjust to your location, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, because the moon is going to be waxing, getting bright. There's all these trines going on. Um, But yeah, we're really, it's the moon. So at that point, we're really going to feel it. We're really going to be feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. gonna be like a wave yeah or like a blaze you know or like the i was just like saying water you know yeah yeah because of the man right okay yeah yeah like so it's gonna be a big wet bright bonfire (laughs) (laughs) sounds exciting (laughs) yeah (laughs) or i mean don't miss that one it is good when there's so much fire you want some you want some water yeah you know um so it's that th- like mojo and thirst, you know, mm-hmm. don't miss that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So then by Sunday, the 11th, um, that's when Mercury ingresses Leo and, um, on a few hours later, Jupiter stations direct. So now we're getting Mercury's out of cancer has finally swam out of the, the waters of, of confusion, you know? Um, we're, we're less confusing our, our emotions for our thoughts and vice versa. And that's getting really straightened out. He's direct. He's, he's back into Leo getting some of that, um, that clarity from the sun, Mm -hmm. but there's so much brightness and so much clarity. It's kind of like super saturated, you know? So we can almost be blinded by clarity at this point. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Where you're like, it's the resolution is so sharp. It's insane. Yeah. Um, yeah, like when it's very, very bright, bright outside, some of the, some of the details are, 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 you know, are washed out. They get washed out. Yeah. Um, but so Mercury's back there and, and now expressing our self truth and, and, um, putting attention on, on speaking and analyzing the dynamics of our, our own visibility, um, like what we want people to hear and what we have to say, um, how do we get heard, you know, uh, how do we talk about ourselves <laughs> correctly, you know, and then Jupiter stations direct, which is interesting because, you know, Mercury's like, how do we speak about ourselves correctly and speak the truth? And then Jupiter's like, all right, well, I have coherence of the whole thing now. I kind of, you know, I, I took some steps back to look at it and, you know, I'm looking at the whole thing all at once and, 
that makes me understand my spiritual philosophy and and what's what's behind it adequately enough to start taking some new territory i always say with jupiter and sagittarius it's like where are we at on the where are we at right now and instead of looking at a map it's like looking at the landscape and being like oh well there's the castle we need to get to over there uh let's go and like being you're also inspired by the awe-inspiring vista at yeah. the same time um so it's there this is like it's a, like that you're it's a vantage point it's like instead of looking at a map instead of looking at the ground you are able to be elevated to a point so that you can see where you are where uh, where on a map you you just wouldn't have that that understanding you could even say like oh look and there's water right over there which right. we definitely need some of that so let's like bring the horses that way yeah yeah and you don't always have that option yeah totally because <laughs> the horses need the water yeah. you're going back to the water <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we yeah because we have been swimming every day mm -hmm. yeah. um but yeah the it's fantastic but that's a good that's a good point you know that you're sort of making it that like when we're talking about how to sustain all this fire, like at the same time, it's like, make sure you keep your cool, make sure you like hydrate, you know, cause mm -hmm. the, the planets by transit aren't going to be offering water, you know, it's like the, there's not going to be the person at the rave handing out water bottles. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that you have to be responsible. You, yeah. You have to be responsible for that and yeah. kind of make yourself do it and like exteriorize it. You yeah. Know? Um, but yeah, so the vista, the vantage point, like, because um, on the map, you're like, I guess we're here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, I understand. But in this abstract way where you don't always have the option to just get up in a um, a helicopter and look like look back down and be like, OK, I see where we're at. Yeah. You know, but this is like a moment that you kind of do, at least metaphorically. And probably some people actually be like, well, that's so weird that you said that because I did. I'm going skydiving. I that did day. go skydiving yeah. that day. <laughs> um, you know, and a lot of people are on trips in August, so they might be like passing on by some airplane, on the airplane, and also driving like up to some heights. Mm -hmm. You know, or Mount see, Washington, seeing things from a different perspective. Mount Washington. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, but that's a good. This is a really nice time with those two um, transits that we get to really start understanding things much more clearly. Gaining perspective. Yeah, gaining perspective and able to think, you know, um, inspired to think even, mm. you know. But, and then this is also when Jupiter stations direct, we can start really um, finding some elections for Jupiter talismans again. Mm. And then, let's see, what's the next? Then, by the 15th, we have Venus's superior conjunction with the sun. And so what I was trying to express before about as Venus gets really combust, um, Venus's significations are, can be feel really important to you and really pivotal and doing something on a deeper level, but are, um, are not necessarily like outwardly visible. Yeah. They're, they're like overshadowed by the sun or not shadowed, but the, the brightness of the sun just kind of blots them out. Yeah. Um, and so it, like what you're doing and what you see and what's going on around you just sort of like is too bright and important to really deal with Venus. But at that moment where, and it's kind of causing v like all of the excess things that you used to love, you used to like, you used to find pleasure in, you used to desire that aren't, are just kind of hanging on and extra or outdated are really getting burnt off by these sort of realizations of recentering your, your values. Mm -hmm. But on the moment of the Kazemi is when, um, that recentering happens and there's this kind of brief time period, you know, just while Venus and the sun are within, some people say within minutes, like within like astrological minutes, like 16 minutes or something. And then other people say, um, one, one full degree, you know, but either way, it's a brief period where Venus and the sun are very conjunct and Venus is in the heart of the sun and our desires and values, um, and what we're striving for 
are unified. Mm. So that's, um, that's a time where, where we kind of, it's in Leo. So it has a lot to do with like our self, you know, our, our image, what we radiate, what we find to be true, what we believe, you know, what we believe in and like what we, what we believe to be honest and honorable, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so it's a, like this moment where we can really click in to, to the aesthetics and the beauty and the art and the love and the sex and the lust and the like, uh, that we really want to radiate. And I know we've been talking personally about, um, how important clothing is Mm -hmm. and like what, what kind of, how you want to dress yourself up, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. This is when you do like, um, you know, the, the temperatures shift. There's a noticeable shift, I think in mid August, at least here, here. And you have to start thinking about sweaters and then which, (laughs) which, or at least just thinking about them. You wear them at night. Yeah. 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 You can wear them at night. And then, um, which then puts your mind towards, what's your fault look going to be, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And even um, in a different sense, like people being like doing their August vacation, summary stuff being like, what bathing suit am I going to wear? How am I going to beach body out? Like, what's my, like, uh, what's my like vacation? What's my, um, what do they call that? Like in that resort where, Oh yeah. 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 Am I actually going to buy a resort? You know, yeah. have I become somebody who buys resort? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like look at these $500 sandals. You yeah. Know? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Like look at this designer tank top, yeah. <laughs> you know? but yeah, but yeah, but it's an, it's an important moment generally about how powerful it is um, to think about how you want to decorate yourself and how you want to package yourself and present yourself yeah. aesthetically because um, it means so much. Like when you get Be a new... your own stylist. Yeah. But like how that like... There's so much more to that. That Especially with the trines to Jupiter. Like... That if you change something about your appearance. Like you get new makeup. Or you get a haircut. Or you get some new clothing. Or whatever. It really stimulates um, like deeper thinking and stimulates a weird sense of opportunity and creativity, you know, that yeah. you can kind of be like, well, everything's different. You mm-hmm. know, there's some sort of real metaphysical thing that happens. Just cutting bangs or growing a mustache. <laughs> yeah. Or, or what else? Um, new eyeshadow. New eyeshadow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a manicure. A manicure. Um, tanning salon. The tanning. Bed. Yeah. But yeah, so you see what we're talking about. But that that like, you know, people now are really into what they're calling like glamour magic, you know. Uh, and but yeah, this is some serious business, especially at this astrological moment. You want to kind of do your do your fashion show here, you know, and and get excited and get your game on. And this is right when Mercury exits its uh, shadow, mm-hmm. and so now we're really ready to get beyond all of the things that got re-edited and um, reorganized during the retrograde period and go into some fresh thinking and um, fresh analysis and fresh communication, which is interesting because when Mercury um, stationed retrograde, uh, it was conjunct Mars back in July and, um, and about to square Uranus, but didn't do it didn't complete it and then turned around, went all the way back into cancer, almost opposed Pluto, but not quite turned around and then headed forward again. And by the time he catches back up and clears his shadow, um, the sun and Venus have already squared Uranus. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like we weren't ready to think about these radical changes to ourself until, um, until later, until, until they became clear until we started to be ready to receive them yeah. until we valued them, you know? Um, but now we're really, now we're really ready to think about it. Um, and that's also, as we were saying before, when we get the full moon in Aquarius, where an interesting thing about Aquarius is, um, in this context is it's can draw us towards spending 
towards wanting to be around like-minded people Mm -hmm. and things that jive with our, our sort of, um, our conceptual thinking. And so the moon is very substance and need oriented. We're going to want to like, we're going to really need to reach out to the, the perimeters, um, to gravitate towards these things that are so very personal about what we value, Yeah, you know? Um, so it kind of is like more of this kind of subculture thing that we're talking about. Be like, Oh, I want to wear, I want to wear this kind of crazy makeup and I want to hang out with people who are doing something similar, Mm -hmm. you know, or, or creatively inspired in a, in like a, an analogous way. Absolutely. Um, and then this is also the point that we're talking about being like kind of the dividing line between the party and the after party yeah, and where we get a real change. And then, um, then Mercury square finally gets to square Uranus and that's where we get, he's starting to think about all that, um, the radical changes in Taurus that like new technology, uh, and I have been even think noticing with all the squares to Uranus, how often topics have been coming up about like food and restaurants and like what's going on with like, with that, because that's has a lot to do with gentrif- gentrification, you know, what did everything get replaced with? But, but tons of restaurants, you know, no comment, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, um, so where are we at after that? So we got to. That's right after the Mercury square Uranus. We go um, Mars ingresses into Virgo. Yeah, Mars ingresses into Virgo. Um, and so now we're now we're thinking about you know and the at, we're at the after party and what we we're talking about before and it's Mars it's like action it's like oh there's lots of things we need to attend to like Mars is tactical mm-hmm. um, so it's like oh there's a lot of weird little delicate surgeries some a lot of weird adjustments um, that we need to we need to kind of um, we need we need to kind of attack you know we need to cut things up into small pieces we need to make some kindling to keep this thing going yeah. Um, but it's also where we start to focus and double down on like what maybe the, the thing that we got excited about and begin the, like Virgo is kind of like a a process and an alchemical process and an initiatory process. Yeah. And, and it's a, feels very much like going from being on stage under the spotlight to immediately running behind stage and, and, um, being a stage hand Mm -hmm. and working the, like the sandbags and the ropes and, yeah. and making so you're sure still involved in the production, but you, your role in it has changed dramatically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it's kind of like maybe it's maybe what you got excited about focusing on while everything was blazing hot. And now you're like, all right, well now I really, now I really got to do it yeah. you know, and get to it, you know? Um, which makes sense that right after Mercury gets like that cattle prod that we're talking about, mm. Mars goes into Virgo. Yep. It's like, eh, do it, you know? Um, and then, then Mercury goes under the beams on the 19th. So now Mercury is starting to get more internalized. You know, we're, our thinking goes from Mercury under the beams. I, I notice tends to be like less talking to other people, less externalized to starting to be more thinking, mm. you know? Uh, more thinking and analyzing and less talking. Um, so it's like in this time, if you're really focusing on Mercury, you're going to have like Mercury under the beams. You'll be sort of more uh, introverted. But then when Mercury uh, ingresses into Virgo on the 29th, like so there's that 10-day period that's going to be interesting, it seems, like for people and mercury yeah because it's weird because mercury gets left behind as everything starts to move into virgo mercury gets left behind in leo for a while Mm -hmm. so it's still kind of referencing back to everything that happened in leo but it's getting really detail oriented you know like it's um you might still be getting really deep into your project 
or whatever the the Virgo thing is triggering the thing you're fo- the details of the thing you're focusing on and processing and disassembling and reassembling, but um, you're still thinking about it in terms of how it makes you look. Yeah. And then once Mercury transitions into Virgo, you're more just thinking about the 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 project itself. You know. Yeah. You've like kind of. Uh, you've moved on or come to peace with how it looks or you're just so far along with the process. You're like, well, it's not really about me anymore. Mm-hmm. It's about this. You yeah. Know, it's about the thing. Yeah. You know? um, so yeah, Mercury goes under the beams and then Venus ingresses Virgo right after, which um, that's where Venus finds her fall uh, because she's kind of like the devil is in the details. Venus. Um, she's very, critical of desire and pleasure Mm. and she's very analytical about um the faults within beauty you know Mm. she's like the first one to say like your hair looked better before you cut it or you know like ouch this is like your outfit looks good but i would change the it's the wrong color yeah or you know and you're like ooh, you know uh and but she would excel as sort of like a fashion designer yeah or film director yeah, I think you've talked about that with different designers having that. It might not have been that particular Venus in Virgo, but um, we were talking about designers and how that uh, need for perfection in aesthetics can be so painful for some people like to hear it, but it makes for good designers. Yeah, and it's an earth sign and like a fall, like the word we get fall from really translated from the Greek was more like a depression. And, um, so it's kind of like being down in the ditch, you know, being like, so it's kind of like, give it a job down in the dumps. Yeah. yeah. Or in a groove even, you know, in the foxhole, like, like get in the, get to work kind of, you know? So yeah, you want to give that Venus something to, to do rather than have them, just nitpick um, mm-hmm. things just about everybody and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so now we're starting to like really think about what we like and what we don't like about the thing we're looking on and uh, working on and Analyzing being, it. Yeah. yeah, being kind of critical about how, like how much we like it or how good it is, yeah. you know, whether or not it's valuable. Um, whereas before we were just slashing away at it with the Mars, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, but that's right like an hour before we get Mercury, the ruler of Virgo, trine Jupiter. So we might get this kind of um, like positive and like bigger scope um, expression of that Venus in Virgo, you know? And then we get the sun ingresses Virgo on the 22nd. And when all the planets come into Virgo, they go over Regulus, Mm -hmm. which is like a star that's moved into... um, into Virgo only recently through procession. It's the heart of the lion, like Corleonis. Um, and so it's strange that now it's in Virgo rather than in Leo, like um, like tropical Virgo. And it's really interesting looking at um, how that, that it maybe processed in like 2011 or 2012. And um, it's interesting to see how there's like this whole kind of class of tech millionaires that we don't know their names, but they're very eminent because Regulus is like a star of like famous for being famous yeah. or just like eminence in general. Uh, and so as all the the planets go across Regulus, there's a real opportunity to kind of get um, attention for the thing you're working on, you know, and the thing you're focusing on. Yeah. So you can also kind of catch some elections there because um, Regulus is pretty clean you know you're it's not a convoluted star it's just clear eminent you know yeah visible highly visible um and then we get on the 24th venus conjoining mars which is really interesting because whenever venus and mars come together it's there's like a real sexual energy you know because you get that consolidation and combination of like yin and yang um and it kind of like you know, Venus is very receptive and um, very desire driven and pleasure oriented. And Mars is very like, um, like a doing 
and and exerting energy mm. and even like penetration is like a key word with mars in general like yeah uh cutting and piercing etc yeah. you know that and burning like getting hot so you get like the the like kind of desiring and the doing yeah. uh, wrapped up in one thing you know and so we had talked a lot before of like getting really um deriving pleasure from having your sleeves rolled up and being like in the game and having your hands in the material and getting your hands dirty and um and really loving the work that you're doing yes and even sort of like being kind of like being horny to work on your project yeah you know? yeah we talked about that um for something that you were helping me with and i really liked that concept of or that way of approaching it, you should really shouldn't be doing it if you're not feeling that way about it. Yeah, being kind of like making sure that whatever it is that you're that involved in is something that you're turned on by. Yeah, and you're like preoccupied by in le- in a mostly healthy way. Yeah, a mostly healthy way, <laughs> yeah. Because it also is like um, you could see the same thing with the because it's Virgo of like it's kind of like kinky and fetishy because it's like so specific like we talked yeah yeah like with venus in virgo being like oh not that exactly this yeah you know like um be like i said pea green and that is definitely pistachio (laughs) right yeah (laughs) but it could also be like yeah not like the knuckle of my toe like the like very tip of my toe you Mm -hmm. know like it's like um, because it's like that sexual energy. And then oh, I was thinking latex when I said that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So same, same difference. Same, same. <laughs> so, but that might be something to, uh, to try to alleviate if problems come up there, because you could also get the, um, possibly like Mars war and conflict and Venus, like attention to, um, to aesthetic detail, you know, you could definitely get like a, I'm going to like kick this person's ass for wearing the wrong color t-shirt or, or like a cereal mom. Yeah. Cereal mom. <laughs> <laughs> or, I'm, or like, I'm cr- like crazy angry that you moved that painting like an inch to the left yeah. or something, you know, I wonder what her chart was like <laughs> <laughs> as like a character. Yeah. Or is that based on a true story? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> the fictional chart. <laughs> Like that's a whole thing like that you could look into like fiction charts. You mm-hmm. know? No, I always like the idea of like just kind of casting random charts and then creating characters like based on them. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. We talked about that before, like mm-hmm. um, writing a novel where everything in the novel is um, kind of rooted in like every character has a chart and every circumstance is elected and you are going to write this novel someday. Yeah. Yeah. But um Anyway, yeah, like jo- asking John Waters, like, so that character is serial mom, like, do you have a birth time for her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like in an interview. Yeah. Like, uh, anyway, so. He might. Yeah, he might. Yeah, totally. He's thorough. So, and he's, yeah, he's fetishistic. Mm-hmm. So, um, so Venus trines Uranus right after. So in, after, you know, earlier in the month we had very on the second Venus squared Uranus. So now Venus is trining Uranus. Now Venus is like kind of in harmony. So whatever was like the cattle prod that she got in the beginning of the month. Um, now that we're like, like hands on and doing things and touching things and manipulating things. Um, now she's kind of in harm. She's like maybe gone forward with whatever. She had a Eureka moment of, earlier in the month Mm. Um, even if it was jarring you know even if like the laboratory blew up but she had a major realization and now she's kind of starting to work with and incorporate those realizations yes um and so all the planets you know are starting to trine uranus now Mm. at this at this part like mars trines uranus the next day on on the 28th and on the 29th as we talked about before Mercury ingresses Virgo, and this is a nice moment to get Mercury on Regulus, but Mercury will be really combust. Uh, but maybe combustion is remediated by Mercury being um, in rulership a bit. Um, speak to a professional before speak trying to anything. to a professional, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but 
you know, even if you're not going to put it in a talisman, I mean, you could go with a paper talisman, um, just, you know, to kind of operate for a few weeks, yeah. you know, or, um, or just do a petition or an action on that moment where you get this really visible mercury where you can kind of say like, I think this, you know, like, uh, hear ye, hear ye, this is what I think mm -hmm. and have people really listen and have, um, have them kind of say like, have gain eminence from that expression. Wow. Yeah. Um, so it might be a, like a good moment to like send a, a kind of email or make a kind of phone call or something like that. Mm hmm. Um, and that's the moment when, you know, when Mercury ingresses Vir Virgo and we have Mars and Venus and the sun already there, that's what we're talking about, about like, this is when, um, our internet goes 5g, you know, yeah. like not literally in the world, but maybe, but, uh, this is when, you know, we start really being able to do some, uh, analyzing and processing and organizing and thinking and, and it might be at this point that things get really based on like integers and abstractions and alphabets because everything's in earth signs. So we're really going to be dealing with like stuff, time, materials, um, like physicality, uh, like parts. Um, but a lot of it might be in numbers and, and in like letters, like, you know, like, it says here in the instructions that part A, or you know, that A22 gets inserted into like D56. All right, let's find that piece, yeah. you know, or like measurements, you know, like, well, that thing is 40 feet long and we're gonna, you know, um, that might be really important once Mercury goes in. And it's interesting when we were talking about like the printing press that we moved out of our house in, um, in July around the eclipses and now we have all that space. So we're going to be moving the studio over and sorting through all these things and, and getting rid of stuff and, and resetting things up and deciding, do we want this and not that? So, um, and like measuring the, for does this piece of furniture fit there, you know? Yeah. And at the same time, I'm going to be lecturing in Halifax at the end of September. So I'm going to be making like a, um, a PowerPoint slide presentation, mm -hmm. you know, and, and getting ready to go on a motorcycle trip and kind of being like, Oh, well, what things do I want to bring? And, and I'm having, I'm commissioning someone to like make, um, kind of travel storage kind of bags for the trip. And it's like all, all the things that I'm excited about now in the beginning of August are going to get really detailed oriented yes. by, by September, you know? Yeah, it's it's like coming into sight and you've got to like have it all set to know, you know. Yeah. You're coming over that hill. The hangover is wearing off. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Ideally. Yeah. Um and then that then at the on the 30th we get the new moon in Virgo. So now everything in Virgo including the new moon, now we're like we're um planting a lot of seeds here, you mm -hmm. know. Um, for the next cycle of manifestation. So, um, yeah, it could get a little, I don't know. I think the Mercury rulership is really imp an important point because when you get everything in earth signs, it gets so, it gets, can be pretty dry, you know, mm -hmm. to the point that it can be like, just like a bag of tortilla chips without <laughs> yeah. any kind of like dip. Yeah. You're like, Oh, we forgot the salsa. <laughs> I know. Or yeah, it can be, uh, can become even like melancholic, mm, you know, yeah. where you're like, all we have is gravel and we have to count it, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, we're like, we we're saying with like the hydration during the exciting time, we're going to need to like try to keep excited and keep lubricated during this like really like, um, nitty gritty end of the month, yep. you know? Um, and so that's why we're saying you want to like, make sure you can kind of like lasso a bunch of that excitement in the early period. And cause you want it to be your jet engine that keeps yes. your project moving along, um, so that you don't run out of motivation once it gets real serious. Ration it. Ratchet it. Uh, well, it's an exciting month. Yeah. I like it. There's and a, then like, here we are like at the the top and it feels 
the top of the month. Um, Looking at that vista. I feel optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. Heavy Jupiter um, influence right now. So definitely feeling optimistic. And then, you know, by the end, we're going to get that Mercury in Virgo. So we're going to get two different kinds of, of everything being assisted by dignity um, with just a few days in between of like a kind of changeover, which will probably just feel normal rather than bad. Yes. You know, um, you know, the first couple of weeks people say that, how you doing? And you're like, you're like, well, you kind of want to say like, like great, but we just went through that like kind of traumatic, uh, two months. Yeah. So people are a little like dizzy from it, you know? Yeah. Um, but searching, ser- maybe, yeah. searching, like blowing off some steam, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and then by the end we'll be like, great, just really like really jamming on this, like f- this project. But in the middle, we might be like, good, you know, mm-hmm. Pr- pretty good, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, okay. So hopefully that all makes sense and, and yeah, you all have a good time. Write with any questions. Yeah. Write us in with any questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Thank you.